in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God told the devil, the serpent, and he also told Eve, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So before Eve left the garden, she had a promise from God that out of her womb will come a seed who will bruise the head of the serpent. So now they were driven out of the garden and she was pregnant with the firstborn, Cain. So when Cain came along, the elder son, Eve thought that he must be the one. He must be that promised seed which God spoke about who will bruise the head of the serpent. So you can imagine, that is why Eve named Cain, Cain. Okay, the, the name Cain means I have acquired a man, another seed from the Lord. So because in, in Eve's mind, this Adam, her husband, Supposed to protect her, but never protect her. So, jalat. So now, Cain, another man. So, now Eve said, so Cain must be the guy. Cain must be the one that will avenge our family. So she vested all her hopes and future in Cain. In her mind, she's thinking, Cain will be the glory of our family. He will do us proud. He will bruise the head of the serpent. He will avenge our family. And probably... Cain was given the best education, the best care, the best of everything because he is the future of our family. Moreover, Cain was the firstborn. You see, in those times, firstborn, he will be the one who will receive the double portion of the father's inheritance. He will receive a double portion of the authority. He will be the leader. He will be the priest, the teacher of God's way in the family. So you can imagine, Cain was the chosen one. Maybe that is why when Abel came along, Eve must have thought, this guy Abel was unnecessary. He is, he's like the extra one. That is why she named him Abel. You see, the name Abel in Hebrew is the word Haber, which means emptiness and vanity. It means worthless, meaningless. Many of us have read the, the scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2, where you have vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Do you know the word vanity is Haber? So you can read it this way. Haber, oh Haber, says the preacher. Haber of Haber, all is Haber, Haber. <laughs> so if coincidentally your name is Abel, You have not checked the Hebrew meaning. It means vanity, emptiness, nothingness, meaningless. So can you imagine, can you imagine Abel, when he grew to school, then the teacher, first day of school, 2016, oh, I mean, during those times when the teacher said, can you please introduce yourself? I say, my name is meaningless, worthless. Abel was probably the forgotten one the one who was despised and rejected. He was the one that received only the leftover in the family. Abel must have been in lack most of his life while his brother Cain had an abundance of everything because he is the firstborn. And he was the chosen one. Remember, he was the sea that will bruise the head of the serpent. So here you have two brothers. Treated differently, one was favored, but the other was despised. The Bible said that Abel was a shepherd while Cain was a farmer. You see, one day, the Bible says, both brothers brought offerings voluntarily to the Lord. Now, according to their abilities, they brought what they have. Now, there is no indication in the Bible that says that one offering is inferior to the other. Now, some people say that, you know what, the reason why God honor Abel's offering because Abel brought meat, while Cain was rejected because Cain brought vegetable. <laughs> so, 
So they say, maybe God eat meat and don't like vegetable. <laughs> well, there's no indication. Okay, there's no indication in the Bible whether God like meat or, or, or vegetable. I guess you like both, right? But what we do know is that in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12, it says, For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what he does not have. So in other words, it is the problem, it is not the offering. It is not whether you bring meat or you bring vegetable. The problem here was not about the offering. You see, the Lord looks favorably the presentation of Abel's portion. Now the question is this, so if it's not the offering, then could it be that God was unjust? Maybe God is unfair. Why, why would God favor Abel and not Cain? You see, many people would ask, why God accepted Abel's offering and rejected Cain's? See, Genesis chapter 4 over here does not give us an answer. But rather, it shifts our focus to another matter. And that matter has to do with your response. It has to do with when God say no, what is your response? When things did not go the way you expected, what is your response? William Carey was born in 1761. In a poor remote village of Paulusbury, North, Northamptonshire in England. You see, I can't even pronounce the, the name because it was so remote. <laughs> I did a Google search to try to find ways. Northamptonshire, and I realized that it's a very small village. Right now, in the in a census, about a couple of years ago, they did a census. It is a population of 991 people. After 200 years! Remote, poor, William Carey. He had no formal education. He worked as a shoemaker at age 14. After his conversion, William started preaching. But no one believed that anything great can come out of this young man. Why? Because William was short, scrawny, prematurely bored, and crude in his speech. In 1793, William and his family were sent as missionaries to India. During the first few years in India, a fever swept through the Carey family and claimed the life of his five-year-old son, died. His wife, Dorothy, was devastated by this tragedy and blamed William for their son's death. She eventually had a mental breakdown and never recovered from the mental breakdown until the day she died. By now, if any one of us were to be in William's shoe, we would have given up, throw in the tower, pack our bag and go home. But not for William, because he had a different attitude, feeling the depth of loss and separation from his wife. William wrote in his diary, he said this, this is indeed the valley of the shadow of death to me. But I rejoice that I am here, notwithstanding. And God is here, who can not only have compassion, but is able to save to the uttermost. William Carey went on to become the father of modern missions. He translated the Bible into six languages, opened the first university in India offering degrees, and literally transformed India with the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was the one who preached the famous sermon called the Deathless Sermon. And his sermon is got two points. First point, expect great things from God. Point number two, attempt great things for God. In spite of all the tragedy he went through, expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. City Harvest Church, in 2016, what is our attitude towards the future? Let me challenge you. Let us expect great things from God. And let us attempt great things for God. Yeah. 
in Genesis 4, 26. It says, and, for, and as for Seth, to him also a son was born. And he named him Enosh. Then man began to call on the name of the Lord. So Seth had a son. And the son's name was Enosh. Everybody say Enosh. Enosh. Now again, Enosh, not a very good name. Okay, why? why? Because in Hebrew, in Hebrew, Enosh means weakness, miserable, sorrowful. So if your name is Enosh, don't, don't change your name yet because I like the Bible. The original meaning is all terrible. But yet, now we, we appreciate their names. Why? Because it is when Enosh was born, then men began to call on the name of the Lord. See, the word call here in Hebrew is the word korah. Korah is made up of three Hebrew letters, or three Hebrew words. It's kor, resh, and aleph. Everybody say, say with me, kor, resh, aleph. Now, in Hebrew, the words are written in what we call pictorial form, picture. It is a little, very much like our Chinese character. For example, Chinese character, when we say ko, ko is a square box, right? Why, why is it like that? Because, ah, uh, <laughs> picture, picture, all right? So, ko, resh, and elef. Everybody say one more time. Ko, ko resh, elef. Now, ko is actually a picture of the back of a man's head. Okay. It's a man's head. Resh is a sight of a man's head. Aleph is really Alpha and Omega, Alpha, Omega. It's the first letter in Hebrew. It represents, it's an ox head. Ox is a picture of strength. It always refers to God because He's the one with strength. Now, what does this mean? Now, when you read Hebrew, you read from left to right. Okay? And I should say, from right to left. In English, you read from left to right. But in Hebrew, it is from right to left. So, first, it's the back of a man's head. Then, a side view. And then, an ox head. Now, what it means is this. is that every time when Enosh was born, when man began to realize that he is weak, he is sorrowful, he is miserable, he will begin to turn to the one who has the strength to carry the burden. That is called call on the Lord. Calling on the Lord. Enosh reminds us, reminds us that every time when you are self-conscious, when you feel that you are struggling, you are in lack, that you are like a Haber, Haber, all is Haber, utterly Haber. You must learn to turn to the one who is always present at the door that can carry your burden and lift you up again and again. <laughs>